Marc-Andre Fleury is back for two more years. We talk about the extension with the Minnesota Wild, plus two new prospects after the first round of the NHL draft. All that and more today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Locked On Wild is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we discuss the Mark andre Fleury re-signing two years, $7 million in total. We talk about what it means for this coming season, as well as a look into the future for the Minnesota Wild goalie position. Plus, we'll talk about the newest members of the Wild's prospect core as Judd Brackett with very solid picks for the Wild's two first round selections. All that and more coming up on today's episode of Locked on Wild. And uh, thank you for tuning into today's episode. My name is Seth Topol, host of Lockdown Wild, veteran Minnesota sports content producer. With well over a decade's worth of experience covering your favorite Minnesota sports teams and uh, guiding you through the offseason here on Lockdown Wild. First round of the NHL draft is in the books. It's history. There were some big trades. Interesting that uh, the Chicago Blackhawks were as active as they were. And um, got a couple of players, or got a couple of picks, I should say, for uh, some top-level players as Kirby Doc and Alex DeBrincat traded. Um, it'll be interesting to look at, and we may do this next week, um, how they did in trading on draft night as opposed to how the Wild did trading before the draft even occurred. But I uh, wanted to start with, obviously, the big news of the day, non-draft related, that uh, Marc-Andre Fleury is back. There was a report earlier in the day yesterday that Fleury was back in a one-year deal. It was Kevin Weeks that uh, was the one to report that. Turned out that was not the case, as Fleury had conditionally been looking at a multi-year deal for whoever he was going to sign with. You have the dominoes of Darcy Kemper not going back to the Colorado Avalanche after they traded for uh, one of the New York Rangers goalies. So just a ton of movement throughout the uh, the goalie landscape, which led you to believe that it was going to be either the Toronto Maple Leafs or the Minnesota Wilds. Turns out it's the Minnesota Wilds that get things done. Flurry back in a two-year, $7 million deal, $3.5 million in average annual value. And so uh, for... Flurry, he gets uh, a couple more years. And for the Wilds, this gives them an interesting potential scenario after this season. Cam Talbot's deal is done after this year. Jesper Wallstead will be in Iowa this season. And depending on how his development goes, he could be ready to hop in to the NHL level if he really exceeds the pace he could be ready to hop into the NHL level as the backup for Marc-Andre Fleury in the second year of his deal. The big thing with this is that Fleury's deal carries a full no-movement clause. So probably going to be the final tour for him uh, before he calls it a career. And so gets the opportunity to be the 1B question mark for the Minnesota Wild this year. And look, we talked about Flurry's performance after he was acquired by the Minnesota Wild. He had some games where he looked very good. He had some performances against teams that were playoff caliber that the Wild faced down the stretch that were not as crisp and uh, was very prone to giving up big rebounds that led to the uh, the Wild defense not being able to um, clear those rebound attempts, which let the team down. Uh, a lot in the series against the St. Louis Blues. And 
you know, I've, I've seen a lot of comments as we've talked about this over the last couple of weeks, saying things along the line of, look, it, it's pretty obvious that Flurry has has lost a little bit of the juice, and I can't argue with that. Um, you know, we, we talked about some potential goalie options for this team to look at, and ultimately came down to familiarity with uh, with Flurry with this team, and the hope by Bill Guerin and Mark Andre Flurry is that by getting a chance to go through training camp to get settled in with this team for a more long term proposition, that his numbers are going to improve, that the Wild are going to get comfortable playing in front of him, because it wasn't all. Flurry's fault per se on some of these rebounds. Some of it was the wild defense, but it's everybody is culpable um, for how that series went against the St. Louis Blues in the playoffs. And so if it works that Flurry's performance improves, if it works that the Wild's defense is able to help him out a little bit more, then it's then it's a good signing for both. But if not, if we see more of the same that we saw down the stretch and into the playoffs against the teams where it matters the most, then yeah, this is probably not going to look all the greatest. But again, at the end of the day, you've got uh, Cam Talbot, who is going to be your uh, your number one starter uh, for this Minnesota Wild team. Or is he? We're just going, just cruising through the uh, the NHL draft, and then Michael Russo drops this after um, a, a few hours into the draft. General Manager Bill Guerin plans to call Cam Talbot tomorrow. Doesn't want to take him for granted and wants to make sure he's okay with 50-50 tandem with Flurry. Talbot and Flurry have a great relationship, but Guerin did talk tonight with Talbot's agent, who voiced some dismay over the situation. Follow-up tweet to that. Garen made clear he is of the opinion and conducting himself like Talbot is going to be fine, but Talbot and Garen and his agents plan to talk tomorrow, so this may come to a head. Remember back to the series against the St. Louis Blues. Cam Talbot had those great numbers finishing off the regular season going into the postseason, and it was Marc-Andre Fleury that got the start in Game 1 of the series because of his postseason pedigree because that is who the Wild brought in to be the one to guide them through the playoffs. It worked in a couple games, didn't work in others, and by the time the Wild made the switch to Cam Talbot, it was likely too late for it to matter in any conceivable way. And there were reports that Talbot wasn't super thrilled with the situation. He tried to play it off like, look, we're here to win games. We're not here to... You know, have everybody be the best of friends. But if this report is true, it's clear that there is a little bit more to that than we previously thought. And if you were to ask me which side of the coin I would rather be on between Cam Talbot and Mark Andre Fleury at this point, going to be the Cam Talbot side of things. And so hopefully this does not, you know, rear its ugly head to the point that a trade is required. But if it is, then that's something that the Wild are going to have to deal with because, you know, those are the ripple effects from being a team that has gone all in to try to win playoff series and to try to compete for a Stanley Cup is that you know, make moves like this, you make moves to acquire players at the trade deadline, those players play. And so it didn't work out the way that anybody hoped in acquiring Marc-Andre Fleury, if he's able to improve on his numbers from last year and if the Wild defense gets more comfortable playing in front of him, then it could be good. But if not, well, then I think what we are expecting will happen over these next couple of years with the buyouts reaching their peak, that may be accelerated a little bit uh, here for the Minnesota Wild, which is why it's great that the Wilds were able to add a couple of good prospects to their prospect pool in the first round of the draft. And so as we continue today's episode of Lockdown Wild, we'll talk about one of those first round picks that, of course, being Mr. Liam Ogren. We'll talk about him. We also have Danila Yurov to talk about here 
today as well. All of that and more coming up next here on Locked on Wild. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. You can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball season continuing. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. So head over to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. You can find all that and more at Bet Online, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. And thank you for tuning in as we had a couple of videos breaking down each first round prospect for the Minnesota Wild uh, that they selected at 19 and 24. If you missed those, head to our YouTube channel. They uh, have been posted. Uh, great to talk with Gil Martin and Brandon Pillar of uh, Locked on Islanders and Locked on Senators, respectively, getting their takes on the Minnesota Wilds selections in the first round. So first round draft, and this is becoming a pattern with uh, Judd Brackett in charge of the Wilds drafting and scouting. Uh, the Wild were widely considered one of the winners of the first round of the NHL draft, had the two picks because of the Kevin Fiala trade. And so now we know that the two players that the Wild acquired in return for Kevin Fiala were Brock Faber and also were the uh, first pick for the Wild at number 19, Mr. Liam Ogren. Now, Ogren is a forward from Sweden, 18 years old, six foot one and uh, 201 pounds. He has a left handed shot. And uh, let's look at elite prospects first and some of the things that they say about Ogren. Everything happens in motion for Ogren. He gets moving as pucks arrive at his position, skates through his passes, and doesn't need to break stride to get off his shot. He plays such a heightened pace at such a heightened pace that the puck often flies from his stick no sooner than you realize he's even secured possession in the first place. Uh, I think his powerful stride and shot stands out the most. That is Michael Holmquist, his head coach in 2022. Um, a team player who is very coachable, a great character and captain material. And uh, drafting Europe in 2020 said his offensive zone passing is terrific and confirms his quality offensive instincts. The athletic breaking down each pick as they happened. And uh, background for Ogren who projects as a middle-of-the-lineup player, and his player comp is Alex Ayafalo. Uh, the background is Ogren was a goal-per-game player and a top scorer in Sweden's J20 League while also playing limited minutes in the SHL. He was a top player for Sweden's U18 team and played for the U20 team in November. Analysis, calling Ogren a goal scorer isn't a novel observation given his stats this season but he's shown he can score goals in a variety of ways. He has great hands and can create offense through his skill. He generates a lot of offense around high percentage areas because of his strength and compete. Ogren also has a shot that can score from range. He's smart enough with the puck to move it well, but is more of a shooter and worker than a playmaker. His skating is okay. I've heard from scouts who like it, but I've never seen a player who can separate with speed. He projects as a top nine winger. Ogren provides legit skill. These are the thoughts from the athletic on the pick. Ogren provides legit skill, finishing ability, and compete to the wild, complementing a growing stable of prospects who combine skill and compete level. The wild have done a good job drafting at the premium positions lately, and Ogren gives them a highly talented winger now. So the things that I like here, because I'll say right off the bat, was a little surprised that the wild didn't go with a natural center at either of their first two picks here uh, in the draft. But again, hard to argue with what Judd Brackett has done since he uh, took over as director of scouting for the Minnesota Wild. First round picks, Marco Rossi, 
Jesper Wallstead, Carson Lambos, and now Liam Ogren and Danila Yurov, who we'll talk about to finish off the show. So Ogren brings scoring ability and is a shooter, is a shooter first and foremost. I like the sounds of that because the Wild just ended up losing a guy who uh, was one of their top shooters on this team in Kevin Fiala. And so, you know, while it was a surprise that they didn't go for the center position, we got to keep in mind that you have Marco Rossi. We also have Murat Houston-Dinoff, who is going to be a center prospect as well, currently in the KHL. but. You've got centers in those two who are a little on the smaller side, but are definitely able to facilitate and are going to be great playmakers themselves. Get some shooters around them. And so I I like the pick of Ogren. Wasn't somebody who necessarily was on my board. Um, I I thought that, uh, that Lambert would maybe be the pick for the Wild there at 19. But at the end of the day, I have little reason, if any, to doubt what Judd Brackett is doing and to see other experts throughout the league saying Minnesota has to be considered one of the top winners in this draft. Really, it's it's hard to be anything but excited about what Judd Brackett and Bill Guerin are building uh, for this team. And the other interesting note about the uh, 19th overall pick, now whether this involved um the 19th overall pick, or as Spoke Z pointed out, uh, was in a um, a draft live stream last night with the uh, the Soda Pod guys. And Spoke Z mentioned that you know they they may be discussing trying to move up from 24. Uh, whether or not the Wild had discussions about that or about 19, Bill Guerin was actively at one point trying to move up the draft board uh, to select somebody. The Wild had a couple of really good players that fell to them, that slid to them. And this was a draft that started off with some picks that a lot of people were surprised by. So there were good players that slid to the Minnesota Wild at 19 and at 24 to the point where whether or not the trade worked out, whether Garen even after a couple of initial phone calls tried to really ratchet up the intensity for the trade. The Wild got guys that they believe can be huge impact pieces for this team. And so you you add those to the mix of what has been built. And that's just the first round guys that uh, Judd Brackett has added to this prospect core. Don't forget the other picks that uh, that Brackett has made uh, for this team in the later rounds. They have a chance to be really good themselves. And you go from a draft philosophy of having your core essentially established as the wild did under Chuck Fletcher. You know, he, he got to building up this core of pieces. You had Zach Parisi and Ryan Suter. You built around those guys and it seemed like the wild got to this group and they're like, okay, now we're trying to fill particular needs for this team, whether it be a third or a fourth line guy or a back end defenseman. And so you had your core at that point and we're trying to add pieces to kind of the back end of it. Whereas Bill Guerin and Judd Brackett right now are building their core through the draft and Colorado's done it. Tampa Bay lightning have done it. Now the wild are trying to, kind of buck the trends of being teams that have bottomed out for first overall, second overall, et cetera, type picks. But you look at this group that the Wild are putting together, and uh, it's very clear that Judd Brackett and Bill Guerin are trying to build their core that will get them going once the buyouts are done in three seasons. Um trying to find a group that can be like that that starting point that they then can add to if they need to. If they need to shell out money for a forward or a defenseman, they have the ability to do that because the hope is that all these guys will be in the NHL level at relatively the same time. So I like the Ogren pick. I wasn't expecting it, 
But in reading up on some of what he brings to the table, I like the size factor. I like the fact that he is uh, is more of a shoot first guy. So I like the pick and uh, I'm excited to see how it pans out because again, like we mentioned, it's those two players now for Kevin Fiala. So it's going to be pretty easy to see how that trade works out once those guys make it to the NHL level. And depending on how Fiala does over the next couple of seasons with the Los Angeles Kings. So Ogren in the uh, the wild prospect system. Now we do have one more pick to talk about here uh, to finish off today's episode of Locked on Wild. And then beyond that, we'll kind of look ahead to what else we expect to see from the wild here uh, throughout the rest of the draft. All that and more coming up on today's episode of Locked on Wild. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. So the second first round pick for the Minnesota Wilds, not to be outdone, uh, another player who absolutely fell to the Wild, and I think the team was thrilled with how things played out. That, of course, being Danila Yurov, uh, the right winger who is uh, currently playing in the KHL. Uh, according to elite prospects, we'll start with them. And uh, then we'll move to the athletics analysis of uh, what Yurov brings to the table. Um, and it's interesting to note, too, first and foremost with Yurov, is uh, I mentioned the KHL. So obviously, he is going to have some ties to Mr. Kirill Kaprizov, who, have, who also played over in the KHL. And so uh, certainly a factor there, you would think, in the Wild choosing to select him, uh, despite everything going on in Russia at the moment. Elite Prospects has this to say about Yurov. His plus-level skating, well-maintained mental map of the ice throughout constant scanning, a willingness to play the body and cut opponents off at the hands, and great lines to the puck make Yurov an excellent forechecking presence in many of the viewings for elite prospects. He's an absolute nuisance on offensive zone retrievals, unrelenting in his pursuit, working every bit as smart as he is working hard. Uh, quotes from EP Rinkside. He is a strong skater, proficient at reading the ice to find open space and then attacking it. Nice of skill, strength, and shooting. And then drafting Europe in 2020 says this, strong skating and good puck protection, tough to handle when given space to rush down the wing. So again, a player who can be physical and who brings a little size to the table. Here's what the Athletic had to say about Yurov and their background on him. Yurov played limited minutes on one of the best KHL teams, often lining up as a 12th or 13th forward for Magnitogorsk. Later in the season, he played more junior games where he was very good for a top MHL team. He scored three goals and four points at a U-20 Four Nations tournament, which helped him make Russia's U-20 team in a lower role. He was a point-per-game player in Russia's junior league the previous season and scored 11 points in seven games at the U-18 World Championship. The analysis of Yurov, Yurov's skills stand out when you watch him. His stick skills and overall creativity with the puck are high end. He's a good skater and shows excellent ability to beat defenders with speed or with deeks. He also shows great skill in tight spaces to maintain possession. Yurov can make plays, but I wouldn't call his playmaking as dynamic as his stick handling. He's not overly physical, but Yurov works hard to create turnovers and can kill penalties. He projects as a quality top six winger. And the, the thoughts on the pick, Yurov is a top 10 talent in the draft in the opinion of many NHL scouts, but his KHL contract understandably scared away many NHL teams. With a second first round pick and a now deep prospect pool, the Wild were in a strong position to make this selection and use Kirill Kaprizov as a way to attract Yurov to the NHL. Uh, comp for Yurov is Troy Terry. Now, the interesting point here, is because you look at the numbers, you may look at the graphic that we used uh, to discuss the Yurov pick and see no goals, no assists, no points, 
in 21 games. Well, as the athletic alluded to, guy was barely playing for the KHL. He was just being benched, was playing 30 seconds a night. And so hard for him to do anything given those circumstances. But if you look at his performance in other leagues, obviously the talent is there. And so uh, for both of the Wilds' first-round picks, not players that are expected to make any sort of immediate impact on this roster, but the Wild don't necessarily need them to. They have pretty much filled out their entire roster here um, as we move towards the season with free agency on the way. There's potential that a few other moves could be made uh, depending on what the Wild want to try to do in free agency, depending on how some other things play out between now uh, and the start of free agency next week. But by large, the Wilds roster is pretty set heading into next season. And so if it takes a little while for both of these guys to get to the AHL and then move into the uh, the NHL ranks, that's fine because after this season, the buyouts go up by $2 million. And then two years after that, basically gone. Total buyout, I think, is something like $1.6 million. So that's the real point of, like, we're going to start building towards really putting something together. Because the hope by then is that a lot of these prospects will either be on the way or will be up at the NHL level. And then you have oodles of cash to do whatever you need to do uh, in order to make the rest of the roster work. So. I like, uh, again, I like the Yurov pick because you have guys uh, on the wing right now. Matt Zuccarello, whose deal is going to be coming up here uh, during the worst of the uh, the buyout year. So does he get re-signed? If not, you know, you have a guy, a couple of guys who in a few years could be ready to step up and fill those spots. And you can mix and match the lineups until they're ready to go, but whether it be getting some true centers or taking this draft to address the offense, I think the Brock Faber acquisition and the Kevin Fiala trade really kind of put it in stone that the Wild were going to use the first round this year to do some things on offense. And now you can look at that you basically got, you know, you got th- a you got two first round picks and then you got a guy who uh, I believe was taken in the second round, that being Brock Faber, who could turn out to be a really good defenseman himself. So a good haul in round one for Bill Guerin and Judd Brackett. Now, obviously, the uh, the rest of the draft, it'd be nice to see a center taken. The Wild do have two second round picks, so it's entirely possible they go that route. Um, would also be nice to see a goalie taken relatively high because beyond Jesper Walstead in this prospect pool, not great. So I would say defenseman and goalie are probably next on the totem pole um, or not defenseman center and goalie are the two most important areas to address here uh, in the rest of the draft. And as we have been able to say over the last couple of years, something we couldn't say previous to that necessarily. I have full faith in what uh, Bill Guerin and Judd Brackett are building through the draft. And so I have no doubt that whatever they end up coming away with here uh, in the final few rounds of the draft is going to be something that will help this team down the road. And that's a super comforti- comforting feeling to go with to be able to just kind of kick your feet up and uh, just react to whatever the Wild end up doing with the rest of their picks. So a great first round for the Wilds. A lot, obviously, that is on the table for t- uh, today. And so we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on it. If we need to do any sort of a breaking pod to, uh, to break it all down, you know we will. And uh, other than that, just enjoy the draft and enjoy the weekend. We'll break everything down for you in full on Monday. Uh, make sure that you also are following Locked on Wild wherever you listen to your podcasts. 
We're available free of charge on all of your favorite podcast platforms. So stay up to date with all things Minnesota Wild as we guide you through the offseason. We're bringing you new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.